all different parts of Europe, and I'm gonna fuck up if I start naming them. <laughs> we, we can do all different parts of Europe. When we are in the States, we basically can play the major cities, you know, consistently, like the New Yorks, the Bostons, the Phillies, LA, San Fran, like you can start naming the major cities, but we're not gonna go into all the, you know, the other markets and have the same success. I don't know what it is in Europe or why, whether they, whether it's still like they're a step behind and it, it still hasn't caught up to them yet, I, or, or they're a step ahead and that they're still holding on to it the way, you know, the American people aren't. But there's no question that yes, the, the, the audiences and the shows and the opportunities over there are alive and thriving. I'll say that in terms of Europe, I don't know where they stand in terms of culturally ahead or behind. You definitely do get a sense that they're so much more appreciative of every era when you're out there. So I guess in that case, they, they look at the past as if it's the present. And I don't mean that in a negative way, I mean in a positive way. But at the same time, in terms of touring, I think they're way ahead of us. Why? Because they take people from different genres of music, not just hip hop, and throw them together. I'll be in a tour in, in fucking Sweden or Norway, and it's like, me and Lil Wayne and the, the game and Kanye and the Deftones and fucking U2 or some shit. And we motherfuckers that come from the punk rock and the, the hardcore world that I may have never heard of, and they'll just throw everybody together. Mm. And it brings more people to listen to the time. I heard myself and I turned to my friend and be like, yo, this music is kind of hell. I didn't know what the fuck was on stage. I had no idea who these kids were, but they were just some random group of DJs that came out of like Switzerland or something. So in, in that aspect, I think that they bring more people together. You can get more of a presence in terms of Europe by doing a single show, whereas in America, it's more like, uh, you do one show, people forget it. You do it out there, they, they tend to feel like so loved and respected that you came to that one place that you built a foothold there in order to come back there again and again and again. But that depends on you, because if you sit after the show and you get drunk and high and you start hollering at women that don't speak English, instead of speaking to the promoter and saying, man, how can we do this again? Mm -hmm. Or you speak to the venue owner and you say, well, if I get another promoter, can we do this? How do we do this? If you're talking uh, percentages rather than guarantees, people are a lot more open to talk to that. You tell them, I'll get myself there you know what I mean, just pay me to be there, and then since you're an artist, if you're incorporated, you write the plane tickets off on your taxes, and all the food that you ate at the airport, and it was a business meeting, you were discussing hip hop, I mean, that's another story. But you have to be willing to invest the money to incorporate yourself and understand how to function within that environment. But Europe, yes, they may be a little bit more open, but at the same time, if you're not popping here, don't expect to go there and then just blow up out of nowhere and come back here waving a torch like you invented some shit. But I, 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 I didn't add it to what Technique is saying. Um, they, they definitely show a lot of appreciation and respect and pay homage to heads from the States. But I think one thing that I've noticed from going up from uh, being blessed to go overseas is uh, they, they, they go the extra mile for us when we go out there. They show us so much love and support. What pisses me off is that when they want to come out here, because a lot of them have that same dream, like there's heads out here that like, yo, I can't wait to go overseas, oh my God, to go to Africa, Asia, or Europe, and then someone out there actually makes it happen. We're like, holy shit, this is, is actually you know, taking place. Now those individuals out there feel the same way about coming to the States. But well, why is it, the thing that, that always messes my head up is why is it that it's so much more difficult to bring them over here? To incorporate them on a big tour or a show, you know what I'm saying? It's just like there's a lot of a, a lot more red tape, and it's like I feel like the love and the support is not reciprocated. You know what I'm saying? I think I think a lot of that's based on marketing. It's based on the fact that they probably have a better inclination of who the artists are that are going getting ready to go over there, as opposed to the other way around. We have no idea who they are, right, right. so their music their music's not getting over here. So you know they can't really expect us to to. You know, bring them in if we don't know them. You know, if we don't know anything about the music or anything. At least language, language too. Yeah, well, at least yeah. that's definitely a big part of it. A lot of them are rapping different languages, and people don't understand what they're saying. Whereas English gets over a little bit more. That's a one-way thing. Because we, I remember, we went to Spain. I think it was um, Seville. They didn't, I mean, we had a European tour. Um, the summer times, like mainland Europe, and they threw us uh, three weekend gigs in Spain. They didn't know who the fuck we were. None of us. But they were going crazy. And it was like they were just happy we went there. And like in Europe, a lot of times, the smaller the town you go to, the better it is. Because they're like, yo, I can't believe you came here. When I went to Australia, I went to Perth. 
that's on the other side of the continent. So when you go to Perth, it's like, oh shit. I, I went back like eight years later and I did a show in Sydney and someone flew in from Perth to see the show. And I was like, what? I was like, wow. Because that's like going to California, going to Perth. And nobody goes there because it's expensive and it's way off and off the beaten path. So like when you go to like small towns like that overseas, they appreciate it so much. When you come back and go to the nearest big city, they'll be like, hey, remember me? You came to you came to Trier, Germany. And when you go to Frankfurt, they'll fly all the way down there to see you. You know, and, and that that's something that I always remember from yeah. from you know. So you know, I mean like you said, they don't you know, the smaller the towns, they don't have it in their backyard like we do here. So unfortunately we take it for granted a lot of times sure. that, you know, we have all these artists walking in and out of here. And for them it's like, you know, they might get that twice a year, three times a year, they might get like someone that, you know, decent worth seeing. So they sure. definitely appreciate it a lot. Just to build on what he said, you could apply that gem he just dropped to everything that's going on in this country right now. Because if you're just hitting LA, you know what I mean? then you're wasting your time trying to get a big show out there if you're not going to rock San Diego too. Right. I would tell people, listen, don't just do the big shows because I know this is something that I do, this is something I've seen up down artists do as well, where it's not just the major cities, but then they'll take a pay cut for doing the smaller shows in the surrounding areas, and that way when you come back through, you get the love from there. I've got people that come to my LA shows and they'll be like, yo, you know what, Technique? I came to see you in Fresno and there was no AC and it was like 110 degrees. And I always remember that show because my pants were a different color because they were soaked. Because G.I. Joe had to dump like ice water on himself to stay awake during that massive heat wave. And when they see people from San Luis Obispo, they see people that, when I see people that come from, uh, from Pomona shows, when I see people that come from Escondido or wherever the hell else I was in, that then gravitate to a major show, it lets me know that I can do the major festivals as an anchor date for everything else, but then I can travel and hit every single other area. And every single other area might not be the huge mountain of paper that the big shows are, but each and every one of them probably has a Best Buy or something within the vicinity, or has somebody that has iTunes in that vicinity that will be able to bump up your sales and you'll be able to write down those sound scan sheets that show that you sold this many uh, amount of records at whatever venue you were at. Sure. Keep in mind that yeah. when you do those little venues, it creates a lot more traffic than you possibly can. I would take this last question uh, from Jay. 